Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T Touch practitioner for animals and people. And this is Tristan. He's a corgi. He's dressed in his necktie today. He says, Mom, it's too formal. It's a lit day for me to lounge. <laughs> He's been really busy lately having to go to work and the dog show and another dog show and uh, just a busy time to be a corgi lately and he's really tired from everything we did last weekend so another gray day in New England but oh, we dodged a bullet on the snow we got just a sprinkling not even an inch and uh, that is a huge relief because I am tired of winter and I think a lot of people up and down the east coast are feeling the same way we were supposed to be in New York City today for well, outside of New York City and New Jersey to do a talk about seniors and yoga for a local station. But because of the weather, we have moved that, which I am really relieved um, because I have to drive right through all the worst snow, New York, South Connecticut, down through North Jersey. And uh, even though they're cleaning up today, I am not wanting to drive in bad weather. So today we are going to talk some more about trick dog certification which is something I think is a really fun thing to do with your dog, no matter you're going to get the certification or not. And you can find out more about this and find all these things on the AKC website um, if you are really interested. So to get the advanced, we already talked about the novice and the intermediate, the two tests that Tristan did and completed at the Mayflower Corgi Fun Day a week and a half ago. So here are what you can do for the advanced trick dog certification. For this one, you are only required to do five tricks to earn the advanced trick dog title. You must already have the novice and intermediate titles. You do not have to have a canine good citizen certification. And tricks are from the list below with no more than two from the handler's choice. And I don't know personally how picky they are. Do they go back and look at your novice and intermediate tests and see what tricks your dog did to see if you're doing something different. Um, it's a lot of dogs doing this that they'd have to check up on. So here are the things that you have to do to become an advanced trick dog. And lots of dogs do this who are doing agility and freestyle and uh, obedience. So the first one is walk backwards. They don't say how far, but they do say Title, handlers for this title may not use food or toys as lures. You may use food rewards and clickers. So your dog has to back up without being bribed. The dog has to balance a treat on the nose and flip it and eat it when told okay. That was one of Comet's favorite tricks. They can do a barrel roll, which means they put two paws up on the barrel and roll it or they can stand on it with all four paws. This is something we see so many trick dogs do in circuses and things. They can do a bow, like take a bow um, and come down on a paw. They can circle right and circle left. And I think for this, the person that was testing us really wanted a couple of circles, not just a little figure eight. So make sure your dog can do several circles right and left. Cover your eyes, which is such a cute trick, and so many dogs learn this, um, and we have to work on this. All the things that come from give me paw to high five to cover your eyes, picking up that front leg. Um, it's a whole series of tricks that you can easily progress one from the next. So if you've got a give me paw or a high five, you can teach cover your eyes. Cover up with your blanket. Uh, go hide, which means get under the table, which is just a step up from getting your box. Head down. Now, if you've got a dog the size of a corgi, head down is going to be a tricky thing to teach, or even a Maltese or a Dachshund. But if you've got a big dog, like a Border Collie, head down is going to be really dramatic. Hide your head. Tristan would like to learn this. He does it all the time, which means put your head under a blanket and a front arm over the head. So the ostrich in the sand look. It's also good to pretend your dog is embarrassed. So you can use that trick. Jump into handler's arms, which Tristan does really well at home, but he was terrified when we were doing this test because there's a blower near the weave poles and he was not excited about that. So he did not want to jump in my arms. The dog can jump over the handler's back 
And I think if your dog is like mine and little, and you certainly don't want him to jump that big, um, you can have him jump on your back as um, a handler's choice trick. Uh, light, so they have to push a pressure sensitive battery operated light. Um, one of those things that, you know, the clappers, they have other ones that are push sensitive. And I had these in my old house. I don't have one now, but that's a pretty easy thing too. If you've got give me paw, it's not too hard to teach your dog to turn on a light. It would be hard to teach them to clap on, clap off, however. <laughs> uh, open the door of a mailbox, a toy refrigerator, and then get an object. So that's get the mail, get something out of the refrigerator, and bring it to me. A lot of service dogs do this. Mine does not because that's not in his realm of expertise. Um, but it's a really cute trick. Play dead. Again, my other two corgis have done this really well. I don't like that idea of play dead, so I haven't bothered to teach Tristan this. Scent articles. Choose from five and your dog can read. I'm not really sure what they mean by that. There's more explanation on the AKC website, but um, I think that they put some articles out and you can choose from the five and the dog has to find something. Sit or down at a distance of 15 feet. Tristan does this really well, but he has not been uh, consistently trained on this one. So when I was asking him this, he was not interested. And it doesn't specify whether you can do that with voice command or a hand signal, but lots of dogs will sit or down at a distance. Certainly our little buddy Coco, who lives up the road. Oh, I love my girlfriend, he says. Coco... Um, one of the ways they can catch her, because she's a terrier, very independent, pretty stubborn. Uh, if they say sit, Coco will sit and not move, and they can pick her up so that she is safe from going in the road. So sitting or down at a distance is actually a good thing to teach all dogs and not so terribly hard. You put them on a leash and start close to them and gradually work your way further or further away, and then you take the leash off. And, you know, the bigger problem for me is that all the distance work I've done with Tristan ends up with a cum and having him sit and down and sit and down repeatedly without the cum to me uh, is confusing for the little fella. You can have your dog pull a tissue out of the box and bring it to the handler. Now if you're going to train this be super careful because if a dog eats tissues um, and personally I don't know that I would train this because I think the risk of a dog eating tissues or having them in their mouth is really high for injury. I know personally a couple of dogs who have died from eating uh, used Kleenex out of the trash can and gotten huge bowel obstructions. So Kleenexes compress really quickly when they're wet. If you've got a dog that has a pretty wet mouth, some of the droolier breeds, this would not be an ideal trick to teach them because there's no way to prevent them from eating some of that Kleenex. So tissue out of the box and bring it to the handler. Now, a step up from tissue out of the box, you could put something like if you have a drooly breed in particular, um, you could have them bring their bib to you or a washcloth or something like that, um, which would be a lot safer and they wouldn't be able to necessarily eat it. They can pick up their toys, um, which means to take it to and drop it in a box. So the dog can clean up and a lot of dogs do this. They know how to put their toys away and a lot of people teach them this when they're young and it's a fun thing to do. Weave poles, they have to do six weave poles with no food and no toy to lure them. And certainly Tristan could have done that, but one of his poles there had the blower by it. Poles are not his best thing. Um, my hand smelled so much of duck that he was following my hand pretty well with actually no treat. <laughs> but the blower really threw him off. And as I said, um, Weave poles, if you've done them in the other levels, I don't know that they necessarily are excited about you doing them again. However, this one's without food or toy lures, and it is six poles. And with the others, you've been able to use lures, and they don't have to do them all. So for handler's choice, here's some ideas. Um, they can speak. They can... Um, what is that? It says treat from something. Hmm. Oh, a treat from a dog puzzle. Um, if you bring your dog puzzle with you, they can find and get a treat from a puzzle. So again, if you're going to go do this, bring a couple of things with you that you might need because you never know what trick your dog's going to do that day, um, especially if you're really an amateur dog trainer. <laughs> 
So here's some ideas for handler's choice. Push a cart. Certainly Comet learned to do that when Tristan was a tiny baby. Um, I taught Comet to push a baby stroller with baby Tristan in it in his onesie for a dog costume contest. Um, push a toy baby buggy. Limping, yawning, singing, dancing. And I'm not sure how they define that. I think the dancing could be just stand up on your hind feet and twirl. Um, or it could be something more specific. Say your prayers, which again is just a step up from give me paw, hand over your eyes, and then paws crossed. Identify your toys by name out of three toys. So again, this is something a lot of dogs can do. They know the difference between their toys, and it doesn't take too long to teach them three names. I mean, Chaser the Border Collie knows thousands of words, and her person works with her every day for hours. He's a retired psychologist. How much fun is that to be able to spend hours working with your dog to teach him names? So that's a fun one and uh, surprisingly easy to teach. Shake, like shake the water off of your body. Tristan knows that one, but I don't know that I can get him to do it unless he's soaking wet. Sneeze, smile, be ashamed, bang, and then play dead. Take off the person's slippers. Make your bed, which is just a variation of the pick the blanket over you. And dancing or moonwalking, which again is the backing up. So you can see where this is headed. My friend Karen, who I've been sending these to, who does uh, dog freestyle, said, boy, I wish they had um, an AKC title in freestyle. I don't know if they do or not, but you can see that these tricks checklists are heading in that direction if you're a person who's interested in dog dancing, which I am. So, in fact, that's really the only reason that Tristan has ever learned any tricks is because I put them into his little dancing routines. Right, Tris? He says, yeah, it's about the tricks. <laughs> So I'll just go through these quickly again. And remember, with the advanced, you only have to do five of them. Now, by the time your dog gets to this level and he can do these tricks, he's probably got a pretty big repertoire of tricks. But I'll go through them quickly as a review just so you can think, hmm, what can I work with, on, with my dog today? Backing up. Balance a treat on your nose and flip it to eat it when told okay. Put two paws on a barrel and roll it or have the whole dog stand on the barrel. Take a bow. Circle right, circle left, cover your eyes, cover yourself up with a blanket, go hide, meaning get under a table, head down, jump into your handler's arms, jump over your handler's back, and certainly for your handler's choice, if your dog's small, he can jump on your back. Uh, turn on a pressure sensitive light. Open the door of a little mailbox or toy refrigerator, get something out and bring it to me. Lots of retrievers love that one. Play dead. Scent articles. Choose from five and your dog can read the scents. Um, Tristan, who has never been trained in this, is pretty good at finding the scent. So we could work on that. Sit or down at a distance of 15 feet. It does not specify whether those are hand signals or verbal cues. Get a tissue out of a box. And if you're going to do this, again, I can't warn you enough about um, the problems that tissues can cause in the guts of your dog. So get a tissue and bring it. Toys, take your toys and drop them in your box. Six weave poles with no food or toy lures. Any agility dog can do that. Uh, handler's choice, you can use things like my dog speaks. He found a treat in a dog puzzle. Pull a cart, push a toy baby buggy, limping, yawning, singing, talking, dancing. Say your prayers, identify Toys by name, out of three toys, pick one. Pretty simple. Shake, as in shake off water. Sneeze, smile, be ashamed, bang, and fall over. Take off the handler's slippers. That's a fun one. Make your bed. Dancing and moonwalking, which is a variation of the backing up, which actually is kind of hard to teach backing up. I mean, they, it's not natural for a dog to do that pretty easily. Um, and Tristan and I have been working on it for months now. Then we can't get it consistent. Can we, Tris? He says, I almost back up a couple feet. Then I want to sit. Backing and sitting are not the same thing, Tristan. So that's a look at the AKC tricks list for advanced trick certification. And again, you only have to do five, not 10, as in the other ones. So it's a really fun thing to work on with your dog, especially on these gray cold days when you can't go outside. It gives you some fun things to do at home. 
and certainly when you're training them you can use treats and clickers and toys to bribe your dog to get him to understand what it is you'd like him to do nearly always they will do what you ask them to do once you are able to figure out a way to clearly show them what you want them to do so have fun trying some of the advanced tricks with your dogs we will be back tomorrow for another episode of conversations with a corgi hopefully we'll be more on time i'm telling you i have just been so busy lately i'm swamped i don't have a second of a day that's not scheduled and i'm so behind on my emails um I don't even know why. It's just strange that I'm this busy. It's crazy. I think the snowstorms interrupting my regular schedule has uh, been contributing because things have gotten shifted all over. So everybody have a great day. Thanks for joining us. Try some fun tricks with your dog. It's going to be in the 50s in South Dakota. Oh, Danny. I, I hope you party down out there. Take your dog outside and try these tricks. Teach them to hide their face in the snow. Tristan says, I like to do that. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Everybody have a great day.